first go at Dragon Magic tracks, well except for the spare tracks I assembled before. Since I watched Evans and Harry's tutorials I knew it wouldn't be difficult at all. I wasn't sure if the tiny ejector pin marks would be visible later so I sanded them off with a file. That wasn't half as difficult and tedious as I thought. Anyway it took me an hour for the first track. I made little piles of 12 track links each. Since the winter cat were often damaged I took two links of each pile and cut off the extensions completely on some of them. On the rest I used a pair of pliers to break off parts of the extensions. Then I put two random links back onto each pile. To assemble the magic tracks I used a long piece of sticky tape, sticky side up and a ruler. I lined up all the links the way I took them from the piles. That way the damaged links had a random position and didn't look placed on purpose. Once all the links were lined up I glued them together in one pass. I used Revell Contactor Professional because it's a slow cure and glue. After allowing the glue to dry for 15 minutes I lifted the tracks off the sticky tape carefully with one side of my tweezers. In the meantime I dry fitted the wheels on the Panzer 3. Now I bent the tracks around the running gear. To add a realistic looking sag I pushed rolls of tissue paper between the tracks and the fenders. 15 minutes later I removed the wheels and the track and repeated all steps for the second track. Here you can see the result and now let's get on with the Stück 3. This time I used cotton buds to give the track a nice looking sag. If you want to use cotton buds for this you need to make sure that the glue is dry enough or you'll end up with hairy areas. Here you can see that it would have been unnecessary work to add the plate with the curved cutouts beneath the fenders. You can't see anything of that particular area and thus it wouldn't have made sense to fill the many ejected pin marks on the underside of the fenders. My cutting mat isn't wide enough to line up 95 track links in one strand. I lined up as many as possible and used those as a straight edge to line up the rest. One more picture of the track shaped around the running gear. Here are both tracks, shaped and cured. I used pieces of copper wire as a handle to keep my fingers out of the way for priming. Here you go. You can also see the panzerized turret of which I primed the interior, but we come to it now. I primed and base coated the Stuck's interior in my previous update. Here I already put on the clear coat. I used matte clear from a rattle can. Since I mix my own washes and know how they work I don't need to use glass clear. I did use it on my T34 and I didn't like the result at all. I call it an experiment and I won't repeat it. Here you can see the strips of masking tape I used to mask up the attachment areas for the superstructure. The Stuck's floor was painted dark red and I didn't care too much about a perfect job because it will hardly be visible. The tape worked nicely and I didn't have to scrape off any paint. The same goes for the areas of the superstructure I masked off. Since it worked so well I did it the same way with the Panzer's turret. I put upper and lower part of the turret together and secured them with four strips of tape. Then I masked the attachment areas for the gun. Since I was using primer from the rattle can I already masked the vision blocks in the hatches. I left the tape a little too long to be able to pull it off after the paint job is done without the need to use a knife to lift up one corner. I don't want to scratch the clear parts. Of course I masked off the attachment areas on the gun too. To get an idea of how to build the throat microphone I used an injector pin from the Panzer kit. 
For the wiring I used my trusty 0.3mm copper wire. The bow between the two microphones was made from copper wire as creased with a pair of flat pliers. It was heated in a flame till it was red hot. After cooling off I was able to bend it. As you can see it was a little too long and I cut it in two and glued the pieces together again. The two wires were glued together and were wrapped in a piece of aluminum foil. Dry fitting shows that the microphones are too large and that the two wires should be glued together a little closer to the chin of the figure. I will have it done for the next update. All parts for the assembly of the spare rod wheels are already cleaned up. I didn't send some of the rubber tires careful enough, there are flat spots. Well, they could represent used wheels and maybe I'll add a little more damage. Of course I shaved off the right half of the U of the lettering on the tires to make them read Continental instead of Continental. Spare rod wheels assembled.